the news tonight, pregnant women could soon be on vaccine list. Wolf conditions blamed by COVID patients. And later on, FNPF announces interest payout for members. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nani. Well, Naka Fiji. First, the Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, and his team will be delivering a media update later tonight on the COVID-19 situation. And FBC News will cross live for that update. But for now, we continue with our bulletin. Due to the escalating number of COVID-19 cases, the Ministry of Health is exploring the potential of vaccinating pregnant women. Vaccination Task Force Head Dr. Rachel Davy says the cases have reached the 300 mark, which poses more risk of severe disease to vulnerable groups. Kritika Kumar reports. The ministry is seeking confirmation to vaccinate pregnant women to offer them the level of protection. In recent outcomes where women, uh, pregnant women could get uh, uh, vaccinated and some actually have gone ahead and uh, consented and gotten vaccination. Dr. Devi says the ministry is confident that the vaccine is safe for lactating mothers. Uh, though uh, obviously like uh, one of the reasons why we didn't initially um, encourage uh, pregnant women because there wasn't much studies, um, evidence which showed um, uh, no harm to babies. So uh, that was the main thing. But uh, we know that during breastfeeding periods, that's fine. Epidemiologist Fiona Russell says the antibodies pass through breast milk, providing hope that breastfed babies might have some level of protection. Well, you know, in the middle of an epidemic, um, because we know that uh, pregnancy and having COVID in pregnancy um, leads to, you know, a worse outcome. You know, you, you're more likely to end up in ICU or need oxygen and, and things like that, that in an epidemic situation, we would be offering um, vaccine to pregnant women. And the ministry yesterday launched a vaccine dashboard that provides real-time data on the first dose and second dose numbers at the national, divisional and subdivisional levels. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Suva City Council is ramping up its vaccination drive to support the health ministry's efforts to get 80% of Fiji's targeted population vaccinated. This comes after daily increasing number of cases have been noticed within the Lami Suva Nosori corridor. Jeshulal reports Fijians have been turning up to the Suva Civic Center in numbers to get their jabs. Suva City Council Chair Isikali Tikundundua says Fijians need to make a wise decision and should consider getting vaccinated for a certain level of protection against the killer virus. We are very concerned, to be honest, uh, with the uh, increasing in the number of uh, the new uh, cases. Eh? So uh, what we're doing now is, you know, like uh, what the Minister of Health is trying to encourage. Tikundu Andua says the council is supporting the health ministry's vaccination drive as more people are coming in to get vaccinated after disregarding misinformation. Right now, uh, I think uh, we are starting to uh, have a lot of people coming in when they are starting to realize the, um, how important it is. And some now have done their own investigation scientifically. Fijians have also praised the health ministry's efforts to help protect themselves and their families. People are dying because of COVID, and uh, it's no longer uh, something to joke about. It's serious. I finally got my first job, and this is my contribution to the Ministry of Health's effort in a bid to contain the spread of COVID-19 and help our fellow Fijians return to normalcy. Meanwhile, as of this morning, 293,560 adults in Fiji have received their first dose of the vaccine and 46,208 have received their second doses to date. Health Permanent Secretary Dr. James Fong says 50% of the target population has had at least one dose and 7.9% are fully vaccinated nationwide. Jeshulal, FBC News. The captain of the MV Liohana, a vessel at the Narayan jetty which has 15 crew members positive for the virus, says people coming to the jetty continue to disregard measures that are in place. Aquila Dama and his crew members returned from Ngao, Mbatiki and Nairai in the Lomaiviti group last Friday and have since been isolating inside the vessel. Apeni Sawanga Irandovo reports the Fiji Ports Corporation claims some inter-island vessels are also failing to comply. As three islands on Lomaiviti now restrict movement, 
Aquila Dama and his crew claim simple protocols are disregarded at Suba's main jetty. Even when offloading here at Narain jetty, people would not listen. They would crowd up despite announcement by the Fiji ports. Dama clarified procedures of offloading on outer islands. On the island, we offload on areas where the jetties are, with the help of uh, police. But in other places, we just pass the cargoes to those villagers who would uh, be on the other boat. I make sure my people are wearing masks. The Fiji Ports corporations admitted there are some operators who do not have proper procedures in place. We have been telling them a number of times and also we have been asking a number of documents from them for the, for the safety of uh, our staff. What is that they should have a proper um, COVID-19 um, response uh, plan. How the crew of Lomoiviti Princess 4 and Liahona got the virus is unclear as they only became positive after returning from the islands. Villages in the three islands in Lomaiviti have been advised to lock down their villages for the next 14 days in fear of the virus. Apinisongerdovu, FBC News. And to our latest COVID-19 update. There were two, uh, 312 new cases in the last 24-hour period ending 8 a.m. yesterday morning. The Central Division once again has the majority of the new infections recording 295 cases, 17 are from the Western Division. Fiji has recorded 4,074 cases since April of this year. There are now 3,306 active cases in isolation with 808 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 21. Up ahead, Prime Minister Mbani Marama looks to the future. And villages put in strict measures. Welcome back. Prime Minister Voreng Mbaini Marama says we need to be prepared for more infectious disease outbreaks in the future. Speaking at the Small Island Developing States Summit for Health, Mbaini Marama highlighted that as countries grapple with the effects, effects rather, of COVID-19, global institutions have no clear rules on how our e economies can reopen to the world. Ritika Pratap reports. The Prime Minister stressed that SIDS are facing the same challenges as large and wealthy nations. Vaccine inequity and vaccine hoarding will remain a challenge and a threat to small island developing states because we don't know where the next global health catastrophe will come from or how serious it will be. Benny Marama says the COVID pandemic has taught us that all nations and international organizations must be fully engaged to prepare to respond to the next emergency. Through a multilateral approach, we can grant certainty that SEED's economies will recover more quickly and kickstart a self-sustaining recovery that continues our march to better health for our citizens. Health Minister Dr. Ifremi Wanganembete says with COVID-19, there are a lot of competing priorities before SEED's. We need to uh, be mindful of the fact that small island development states are going to be struggling with the economies post-COVID. The leaders at the health summit have urged multilateral partners to support funding agencies so that states can achieve their goals around health and mitigate the effects of climate change. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Villages in the Ra province are once again on high alert and continue to take precautionary measures to ensure they are safe from the virus. This follows the Health Ministry's confirmation that five corrections officers reported positive in Rakiraki two days ago. Josiah Nanunga reports most villagers are not letting their guard down, enforcing strict restrictions in an effort to defeat the virus. No confirmed case of COVID-19 in the Ra province in past weeks means that this storm is not over, as the virus can re-emerge anywhere and at any time. We can never be too complacent and we are strictly following the government's stance in fighting this pandemic. No one will be allowed into the village as of immediately and will await directives from relevant authorities. 
Ratu Epeli says they are now doubling the surveillance and continue to enforce COVID-19 restrictions, particularly in not allowing visitors to enter any village or residential premises. We are now strengthening our lockdown measures. Village heads have been advised to take this matter seriously as it is a matter of life and death. Families are conducting prayer sessions in their respective homes, seeking divine intervention in the fight against COVID-19. The Twin Alawa says total commitment and support from Fijians and the Vanua can help us defeat this deadly virus. Chose Nunga, FBC News. And more than 100 cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in villages in Tailevu. This has triggered villages and settlements in the province to be extra careful with the virus, Senya Nimboila reports. COVID-19 cases are recorded in Tailevu villages, including Muanaira, Nambitu, Nandali and Verata, to name a few. We continue to monitor movement in and out of our village. We still don't allow visitors for our own safety. We know that the virus is moving close to home and we are working to protect our loved ones by uh, working closely with all villages during this uh, challenging time. For Lomaina South Village in Telewu South, it has all its isolation facilities ready in case they record a positive case. We have prepared everything and this includes isolation facilities. We continue to request villages to practice COVID-19 safe hygiene and ensure that they remain safe. Some other villages in the province that recorded COVID-19 cases include Rara Lebu, Nandaro, Kiuwa, Kuku and Tumubia village. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Members of the Fiji National Provident Fund will receive a 5% interest payout for the financial year ended June 2021. FNPF Acting Chief Executive Viliame Vodonaivalu has announced the FNPF board has approved the payout after determining that it will not place undue stress on the FNPF. A total of $297 million will be credited to over 300,000 members' accounts today. Mondo Naivalu says each member's gain will depend on the average balance during the payout period. However, their accounts must have positive balance. Matching the rate paid out in 2020, this percentage is still very competitive given the constrict economic environment. While investment opportunities are limited, we continue to strategize and ensure that we always maximize our returns. Vehicle owners will be paying more for fuel from midnight when new prices come into effect. Motor spirit increases by five cents from $2.36 to $2.41 per litre. Premix from $1.97 to $2.03 per litre, an increase of six cents. Kerosene goes up by four cents per litre from $1.43 to $1.47, while diesel will increase from $1.89 to $1.97 per litre, an increase of eight cents. Retail LPG prices will fall across the board. A 4.5 kg cylinder will drop from $13.81 to $13.08, a decrease of $0.73. Cents. A 12 kg cylinder from $36.83 to $34.88, a reduction of $1.95. A 13 kg cylinder will drop by $2.11 from $39.90 to $37.79. Bulk gas goes from $2.60 to $2.47, a decrease of $0.13. Cents. And odor gas from $1.74 to $1.65, a decrease of $0.09 cents per litre. Fiji Television has until today to provide updated information to the South Pacific Stock Exchange in order to have its suspended, uh, suspension rather lifted. The company has been suspended from trading since earlier this year due to anomalies in its audited accounts. Once the information is received, the SPX board will decide whether Fiji TV shares can be traded again. Fiji TV has recently hired new external auditors. Its previous auditor had been earlier recalled and reissued the financial statements from 2020, 2018 and 2019. Fiji Television Board Chair Deepak Rathod said, has told FBC News rather, that they are working on the request from the stock exchange. 
Coca-Cola Amatil Fiji has today bought 57,323 shares in Paradise Beverages from Platinum Insurance Limited, meaning it now owns 90.14% of the brewery. Under Fiji's company's Air Coca-Cola can now proceed with a compulsory acquisition of the remaining shares to increase its ownership to 100%. The price of acquisition will be $25.21 per share, reflecting a premium of between 27% and 34% above the market valuation of Paradise Beverages. The buyout will cost $25 million. The brewery will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Coca-Cola Amatil Fiji and be delisted from the South Pacific Stock Exchange at the end of the compulsory acquisition process. Here the local exchange rates are set early this morning. When the Fiji dollar drops versus the major international currencies, it tends to rise against the regional currency. And that was the story today as the Sangamoli rose versus the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Prices were mixed on the commodities market. Oil rose a dollar at $73 a barrel. Gold dropped at $1,764 per ounce and silver dropped as well at $25.97 per ounce. And we now join Sneefa from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money market. Good evening. Risk-sensitive commodity currencies led overnight losses, with the Aussie and Kiwi dollars each dropping about 0.7%. The U.S. dollar clung to recent gains today as virus woes raised concerns in a market already on edge ahead of U.S. jobs data. Signs of strength in the U.S. labor market could add pressure on the Feds to move even sooner on interest rate hikes and lift the dollar while it is vulnerable if the data misses expectations. Elsewhere, China's official production manufacturing index eased from the previous readings, despite crossing the forecast for June, whereas Japan's industrial production grew past market consensus to 22.0% year-on-year in May. Moving on, the COVID updates and Fed speech may entertain the markets along with the European Union data, but all eyes will be on the U.S. ADP employment change for June for clearer direction ahead of Friday's U.S. non-farm payrolls. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Topic Wood Industries Limited is working around the clock to fulfill its quota for wood chips for its Chinese market. The third scheduled vessel from China has been loaded with wood chips at the Wairiki Mill Jetty in Boa. Tropic Wood's Chief Executive Officer Vim Lesh Kumar says they expect to load about 55,000 tons, valued at $6.4 million. The vessel MV Matter, the biggest wood chip vessel, arrived over the weekend and started loading yesterday. Loading is expected to be completed by this weekend. Two more vessels are expected over the couple of months to complete the quota of five shipments this year. That is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, from the office to becoming Baker, we will tell you more. Stay with us. Welcome back. Scientists have launched the UK's most advanced buoy. This will measure the impact of climate change on our oceans. More Inspired by her daughter's love for cupcakes, a 32-year-old mother recently left her office job to start an online cake business. Silo Fong says her special bond with her three-year-old over baking has also inspired her husband to leave his managerial post at an eatery to help expand their business. Kelly Vadala reports. Silo Fong had no interest or background in baking until her daughter was born. So my first cupcake, she really liked it. So I was like, oh, okay. So I think this is something, uh, something special about motherhood and having daughters. Yeah? Chub Chub's Cupcakes has gained hundreds of followers, including clients from overseas. She's really changed everything. Like, she's changed my perspective to life. The business recently started baking cakes for other occasions as well. The money for rent and bond and everything, buying new furniture, those are all from my cake sales. 
Now a full-time baker and stay-at-home mother, Silo Fong says life is all about taking risks and discovering the skills and talent within oneself. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. A total of 38,869 food ration, grocery and essential item household packs have been distributed to date by the government to households in targeted lockdown areas. Of this number, around 1,971 packs have been delivered to Fijians in home isolation in Lamu, Suva, Nasinu and Nosori. Yesterday, a total of 108 packs were distributed to people in home isolation in Tailevu, Nosori, Verata, Waila, Wainimbokasi, Rewa, Davuilevu, Koronivia, Nakasi, Kalsaro, Nandera, Narere, Makoi, Turak, Lodala Bay, Tadirua and Vatuanga. The Ministry of Economy Data Entry Team and the Fiji Police Force continues to electronically register household information and their needs for those going into home isolation. And we now join Jamie for the latest in Euro 2020. Thank you and good evening. And no jab, no play. This and more coming up. Time to look at the weather for today. Trough of low pressure with associated cloud and rain remains over Fiji. It is gradually moving eastwards and is expected to be to the east of Fiji and moving away later tomorrow. Now to the west, cloudy periods with some showers today, mainly fine tomorrow. Eastwards from Pekhaba to Suva, mostly a cloudy day. Moving to the north, partly sunny and pleasant conditions. Places we will be checking out are Navua, Nandi and Lambasa. All three were quite humid today. At sea, moderate northeasterly winds turning southeastly and becoming fresh and gusty from tomorrow as the trough passes. Moderate seas becoming rough over southern Fiji waters from tomorrow. The next high tide is at 11.46 p.m., sunrise at 6.38. For tomorrow, occasional rain and isolated thunderstorms over most places. For Friday, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern and interior parts of Viti Levu, Vanua Levu, Tavuni and Kandavu. Our shot of the day is an awesome afternoon shot of the famous Natovi jetty taken by Spencer Nigel Robinson. Remember to send us pictures, send it with a small description to our FBC News Facebook page. That's your weather tonight. It's back to Edwin. Thanks, Kritika. A different type of participant dropped in on Pope Francis' general audience at the Vatican, Spider-Man. A man dressed in a full skin-tight red, black and blue costume of the comic book and film character, including head cover, sat in the VIP section of the audience in Vatican's San Damasco courtyard. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, why did you choose to get vaccinated? I chose to get vaccinated because I wanted to be as safe as possible for myself, my workmates and of course my family as well. I chose to be uh, um, vaccinated uh, because uh, I want to uh, um, keep myself uh, safe and uh, especially uh, to my whole family, uh, for my kids and my loved ones at home. The reason I choose to be vaccinated is because I need to protect my family, my friends and also all my Fijians here. And also, it's been three months I haven't seen my parents yet. And I need to see them once I'm fully vaccinated, once everything gets to be solved and then I can go back to Mba and meet them also. And recapping our main story is pregnant women could soon be on vaccine list. Wolf conditions blamed by COVID patients and flying Fijian Shep Pedeliato can't wait to face the All Blacks. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should vaccination be made compulsory to protect all Fijians? Visit our FBC News website to answer. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Manda.